this is the results table that you see when you do the agar block soaking in some sodium hydroxide. We have different lengths of agar blocks soaking for 10 minutes in some sodium hydroxide. Then we cut the, set, we cut the blocks in half and we see how far the sodium hydroxide has diffused in. The agar contains some phenolphthalein, so the agar blocks becomes purple. So this is the results table that we're going to make. So we can see what our titles are, we're going to format that first. So we select the table, we're going to wrap the text, which is this button, and here. So that's wrapped our text. We now want to format, align, center, format, align, and middle. Alright, I want this top text here to be bolded, so I select it and then I click bold, and I also want to give it a background colour, so I find the paint can and I click one of the very light background colours, and there's my background. Okay, so we now need to find the surface area of our cube, which is 3 centimetres, so the surface area is 3 times 3, we have six sides, so three threes are nine, six nines are 54. The surface area of a two centimetre cube is 24, and of a one centimetre cube is six. We then look at our volume, so that is our length, our width, times our depth. So three times three times three, so three threes are nine, three nines are 27. So our volume is 27. This next one will be 8, and then will be 1. Now, the length of the cube not penetrated. This is when you cut your cube in half, you'll find, if you use the phenolphthalein, the part of the cube that is clear, and it's still white. It hasn't turned pink. So for our 3cm cube, that turned out to be 2 um, centimetres not penetrated, then one centimetre, and this was fully penetrated. Now we measured, you might have different values, we measured this to one decimal place, so I want to increase the decimal place to one, so there's that. that. It's automatically calculate our answer for percentage penetration. We now need to take this to two decimal places, so we select it and we come back to here where we decrease our decimal places down to two. And there's our answer. We now want to graph our simplest ratio against our percentage penetration of the sodium hydroxide. So this is a surface area to volume ratio. So 2 to 1, 3 to 1, and 6 to 1. So I select that column, I hold the control key down, and I select this new group of cells. I come up to the insert chart. It creates a chart. For some funny reason, I have the second range, which I don't want, so I want to delete the blue ones. If it doesn't disappear, when I go to a scatter graph. So I go to my scatter chart and it's gone, so I don't have to worry about deleting it. I now play around with my custom menu. I go to chart axes and titles and I delete chart title. It's not here. I click on the next one, horizontal axes title. Alright, I want to be able to see some of these, so I want to move my chart down, so I'm going to click and just drag it down so I can see my labels. Alright, so my horizontal axis label, that is the ratio, the surface area to volume ratio, and it's of an agar block.
Okay, that's that title. We then change this to our vertical axis title, and this one is percentage penetration of sodium hydroxide. Okay, we scroll down, we come to series, because what we want to do is change our points to an X, an X marker. My eyes are old, so we want to make it size 14. I want to put in a trend line, because I want to see the trend, and I also want to put in my data label, so I don't have to keep referring back to my graph. Uh, my results table. You don't need to put that in automatically. If you are going to wanting to put in the equation of the line, this is where you do it. So you click on the label and go use equation. So you can see now you've got your equation of your line up here and you can show your R squared value to see how accurate your equation is. The next one we want to come down to, we ignore legend because we don't have two series. We want to make change our numbers on our axes because at the moment it's saying two. We always start the scale on our line graph at zero and I want to go one more so I make my maximum value seven. All right, so I'm going from zero to seven and I don't want that tick in there because I don't want the border to hide the data. I continue down until I get my vertical axes. Same thing, I want my minimum value to be zero and my maximum value, I want to go up a little bit higher than 100, so let's go up 120. All right, because remember we always go up zero, two, four, six, or five, 10, 15, 20, 40, 60, 50, 80, 100. It makes it easier for yourself and we don't want borders. Okay, that is our graph. We now copy our graph by clicking on it and going Control C or up here, Edit, Copy, and we go to our results report, click in there and we paste it.